Hi, everyone. Hi, my dear folks. Uh, this is Liz Soria, your tax advisor and business coach success podcast. Uh, for some of you who are wondering why you're watching this video, it's because we are doing this also in the video format, which I'm really excited about because I know some of you, my subscribers, my dear subscribers on YouTube, were kind of requesting that. So here it is, and I hope you're happy with it. Well, today I really have an incredible um, uh, expert, okay? And I have a lady by the name of Alexandria Agresta, and she is with the Pioneer, I'm sorry, Purpose Pioneers. Mm -hmm. And I would call her to be like a coach when it comes to business communication. And what she's done is she's created a mission to help CEOs and small business entrepreneurs succeed in their business. So no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just give the, you know, the show to uh, Alex here. And uh, Alex, first of all, thank you for being with us because I know we all have a very busy schedule. And one of the things I really get excited about is being able to share with the audience, you know, so much knowledge and experience that we all carry along because we have our own expertise, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so my question to you would be, what motivated you to start your business instead of just perhaps staying with your, you know, regular job? I mean, yeah. I something that, you know, the audience will probably, if they had the opportunity, they will probably ask yourself. So, so go ahead and share it with us. <laughs> yeah, great question. So when I was in college, I realized early on that I was like, no, working a normal job is just not for me. I want to build my own ladder and I want to climb my up climb my way up my own ladder. And I was really fortunate to come from a long line of entrepreneurs. So I've always seen that entrepreneurial spirit. I was always seeing my family creating things and doing stuff that they loved. So when I went out into the world on my own, I was, I was very adamant about creating a work life that was meaningful to me. Life is short and I have to be in the driver's seat of my life, especially my career. So I became an entrepreneur at age 20. So really young. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't looked back since. I love, I love running my own business and it's, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard. It's challenging. But at the end of the day, I feel so fulfilled and I love what I do that I can't imagine a life without it. Uh, and, you know, and, and I'm glad that you're sharing this with me, and especially because you brought up a very good word, hard. And, you know, sometimes, and I've been, you know, running my business successfully also for the past, I think it's now, oh goodness, uh, since 2009? Wow. Okay. Uh, so I, I lost <laughs> track there for a while. Okay. So, you know, a good, you know, now, you know, all these years, but I tell you what, I, I tell, you know, especially when I have prospect clients, entrepreneurs reaching out to me, they're starting a business, no matter what they do. Um... I tell them to be patient because it's really, uh, I think it's a very important aspect that you, that if you don't have that patience, um, you might just rush through it. And then if your high expectations are this high, right. And they're above your head and you're not reaching them, you're going to get frustrated because you're not making real expectations of yourself or maybe you're, you're becoming too demanding with yourself. So yeah. it's, it's interesting that you brought up that word and you were, you know, sincere enough to say it because it can be, you know, uh, uh, challenging, <laughs> yeah. to, you know, to, to actually be in business. Um, so, you know, that was really, 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 uh, interesting. Uh, now what about in regards to, uh, any, any, you know, uh, mentors, people that you had around you in your circle that, or your inner circle, as we call it, or maybe even you know, family or, you know, people that you really had confidence that you can reach out. Did you do anything of that to, 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 try, to try and get some support or how was that? Absolutely. Yeah. So growing up, my dad was my mentor. He, I, he raised me. I'm a daddy's girl and I uh -oh. watched him. Yeah. Love him. He's amazing. Okay. I watched him grow really successful companies and he always guided and mentored me and gave me really great life advice. So I'd say he was my very first mentor and it was cool to have him as a dad, but also as a friend and as a mentor, he played like all kinds of roles. And then as I, uh, as I went out on my own and when I went to college, mm -hmm. I, yeah, when I started my business is when I was like, you know what? I don't know anything right now. So let mm -hmm. me find people who are smarter than me and who can teach me things that I don't know yet. So I was really big on 
going to events, just going to surrounding myself with people who believed in the same things that I, that I did. And then I actually got a business coach in college. Excellent. Yeah. And I was, I was super broke and I was like, you know what? Um, I need this. Like I really need this. So I am not going to let money hold me back and I am going to figure it out. And I figured it out and it was a great decision. And I've just been ever since that business coach, it's just been climbing upwards. I, I, I'm a coach now, but I still have like four different coaches. I am always big on a coach needs a coach because we're always growing. We're always learning. And thumbs up for know. those who are yeah. not watching us. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, like I said, for those who are listening, now you have an excuse why you need to go to uh, to our YouTube yeah. channel and watch it over there. Um, you know what? It, it's really, um, it's a great point because I do believe that this certain um, ingredients that go into uh, making a successful business. And you can have your heart into it. We call it passion. We call it, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, motivation. But there's certain things that have to be part of the, I call it the game, you know, the, the, the whole circle. So and when there's certain things missing, then you need to reach out. Right, yes. and, 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 and it's okay. And, and, and I tell this to, to, again, to some of the, the clients that I, you know, uh, pretty much give them, you know, whether it's tax advisory service and accounting and so on. And I tell them, I said, you know, don't feel embarrassed. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with you going out there and saying, hey, I need help. No, and, there's and nothing really, wrong with that. I need to reach out and learn from all these experts because it's true. It does cut corners and it helps you to advance. Uh, yeah. I was in way faster. So uh, again, you had a great coach, which was your father. Um, uh, you know, not all of us have that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, he wasn't but, my only one. He was just my coach growing up. But then I hired coaches. My business partner, I consider him my coach. It's just, it's, ev it's an evolution. For sure. Excellent. So yeah. you have your business po partner. Um, how and and how did you decide? That's a good question. How did you decide that you needed a, a business partner as being part of your, you know, a uh, big plan in, in your company? I mean, instead of going solo, which is a lot of the listeners yeah. might be solo entrepreneurs, and some do have, you know, partnership. What click in you? Alex, to think that, you know what, I, I don't think I want to do this on my own. Was that it? Or, or what? can you share that yeah, with me? Yeah. Yeah. Great. That's a really good question. I haven't, no, I don't think anyone's asked me that before. <laughs> uh, so I, I, my first company, I did it by myself and oh. I realized this is lonely. Like I need someone to bounce ideas off of. I'm a creative entrepreneur. So I'm always thinking of ideas and to have someone that's a reflection of myself is so crucial. So when I started my second company with my co-founder, he was funny enough, he was by himself too. So we both felt like we both knew what it felt like to be alone. And then when we joined forces, we were like, it's so much better together. Like, it's just so much better to have that person, just a go-to person. It's unfiltered advice. It's, it's non-biased. It's like the intention is I want to make you better. I'm not just going to yes you to death. So it just, to me, things are better together. I always highly recommend someone get at least some sort of person they can have with them as they're growing their business. Oh, wow. That's excellent. And that's great tips, by the way. Um, like I said, uh, I know it's difficult. Um, I, it's, you know, like I said, there's both sides to the coin, right? Yeah. Like you said, you started originally on your own and you found that, you know, it was probably a lot of responsibility too. Yeah. And on top of all that, I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, you take the good and the bad with it. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, again, it's nice to bounce out with someone else ideas and things yeah. to do because the reality is that, you know, a lot of us, I mean, where we're solo, I mean, we might be thinking we're doing something right and, oh, well, since no one else is telling us and bringing it up to our attention, uh, we can right. make the mistake over and over and we think it's fine. <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, so it was interesting that you started your first, you know, business, but then you decided, hey, let me start something else. But this time, I'm going to get a support or having a partner, and I think yeah. that's great. Yeah, and and and, and you know, uh, you have a balance. Uh, I call it there, you know, between a male and a, and a female. You know, which oh, it's so, that so it amazing. Kind of, we think different, right? We do. Yeah, <laughs> we, we biologically have different brains. Yes, like we do. I always say. I love that my business partner is a male because yes, you're spot on. It's like this incredible balance. It's the female energy. It's the male energy. It's two different biologically, biological brains are, we're like yin and yang. It's, we balance each other out 
We do business so well because we have two of those different perspectives. It's amazing. I love it. That is great. That is great. Yeah. I mean, that's so again, people who are listening and watching, I mean, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't be too uh, concerning whether or not, you know, if you do have the right, right, the right partner, which that's extremely important too. Right. Yeah. Uh, because I seen a lot of, you know, partnerships go really, really bad. And this is what I see about partnerships. Just, you know, be selective, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah. you know, you know, you know that person for at least some while, meaning whether, you know, hopefully the longer the better. <laughs> and, you know, find out how you both can blend together. What, what can you give that maybe the other one is lacking, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. how you kind of create that circle um, that you're going to be able to reciprocate and then help each other to succeed in that business. Because again, uh, like I say, I've seen partnerships go really bad. And, and it's like, you know, it comes down to this. I, I, I think that it's really a, a relationship. It's, it is. If you think it's about it, it's a marriage. It's a marriage. <laughs> That's how I see it. Right. It's a, it's we so, have a contract. <laughs> it's a, it is money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't know. Can it be tougher? <laughs> so, totally. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? There's a boundary too, right? This, I think that's something that's very important. And when we do business, we do business. Okay, folks? Yeah. <laughs> so let's keep it that way too. Uh, so yeah, so I think I, I, I have met great uh, partnerships and like I said, some really bad. But again, I think it has to do where we all need to be very realistic with our plans and who we're bringing in, you know, on board and have some sort of previous relationship right mm -hmm. just because for example and i tell this to especially the entrepreneurs who are coming through pro, pro funding or you know bringing up capital and it, sometimes you need to watch out a little bit because remember you're giving away part of that you know um uh, equity and in, in shares of your stocks yeah. So be cautious about that, okay? Because you want to make sure that maybe you have a smaller group of investors than going public and realizing that, you know, uh, you know you're going to have a, a few more, you know, limitations because now, for example, people have to, if they're not aware, but anyway, when you go yeah. public in a C corporation, right, a CSO Charlie, now you have to give up your financials. That's right. That's yeah. public now. That's not private. So now whatever you do, everyone out there is going to know. <laughs> so uh, they're going to yeah. know your business. So, uh, you know, that's really interesting. Now, what will you say that you felt that there was perhaps a gap or something missing in the industry when you decided, okay, I believe that I can really bring something positive uh, to the entrepreneurs and decided, you know what, I've noticed that people don't know how to, you know, communicate, they're having issues with it. Uh, how is it that your coaching can actually help all these CEOs and entrepreneurs to, uh, you know, feel more comfortable and, and, and with the comfort, you know, confidence comes in. So yeah. what kind of strategies or things that you do that helps? Um, and again, you're gonna notice one thing about me, Alex, I pick on people's brain. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I'm not shy about it. I have, I don't I think everyone. And you know what, by the way, a lot of this stuff is not in the script and it's not, you know, we're not going to, everything is just natural. So it I love it. The way it is. So Alex, come on. So I have to dig into your brain. Come on. <laughs> share with me. So the, the first thing was, you know, businesses are, are, they have all these processes and systems to grow the business, do the sales, do the marketing, and, and, and all these businesses, they're doing well, but what I notice, I'm like, there's no systems and processes around effective, meaningful communication. Oh, let me stop you there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Systems, because that's, that's major, isn't it? Systems, there's no systems, systems and processes. Yeah. If there's no systems, forget it. You'll never go beyond one or two or three people. So I noticed all these systems, all these business systems, and I'm like, wow, these are great, but there's a few systems that are missing. And it was effective communication and it was purpose. How, how do we, one, how do we communicate in the same way? Like, how do we all have a common language? Because I hear so many companies, the sales department hates the marketing department and the CEO's not talking right down to the other people, all this crazy stuff. And what I hear, what I'm hearing is 
my voice isn't heard. I don't feel like I belong in this organization. I don't feel like I matter. That's what I hear when I hear all these people fighting. And I'm like, hmm, why is there a system around every single thing but how to co effectively communicate? Right. And what I found is, I think as we began in it, or as we started innovating and going through the industrial economy, the information economy, we forgot why we innovated in the first place. We're humans first. So right. these a lot of companies, they're losing sight of the human touch and the human connection and that we're not just cogs. We're not just being put through this system anymore. We're humans and we have feelings. That's so we, true. Need, we need systems around communication and we need systems around how to unite a team and a culture around a purpose. And when people go to work, they're freaking excited and they're not right. like, oh, I'm just here for the paychecks. I got to put food on the table for my family. That doesn't cut it anymore. And that's what fuels me because when I hear people say, I hate my job, that's what makes me get up every day because I'm creating a world where leaders create structures where people love what they do and they're fulfilled. So. And you know, that's amazing that you're saying all those, those were very positive words. And yeah. you know, it is such a sad reality. Uh, people, yes, a lot. I don't, I don't know what's the percentage, but I'm sure it's quite high. Yeah. Right. In, in when it comes to, employees very very unhappy uh with their positions and you're right they just go for the paycheck and you know what the problem i see with that is that uh and that includes i'm not talking about just you know the the, the what we call medium you know medium uh, management all the way to the top to the executives right is that if they're not transmitting that kind of energy and that support in that right. That, that kind of like, I'm here for you, uh, you know, then what happens is like, there's a disconnection, right? Between oh, yeah. Departments. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to go from authoritarian leadership to empowerment leadership. So if wow. someone, we need to, as leaders, we need to empower. And if someone does something wrong, we can't punish them because that's not going to fix it. We need to hear them, understand them and give them tools to grow. So that's the leadership that aligns with courageous leadership, purpose-driven leadership. That's what's going to create an economy and a workplace where people love what they do. And that's amazing. You know, I think in, in, my, in my perspective, like I said, from, from entrepreneurs that I talk to, I have from solo entrepreneurs all the way that they have, you know, you know more than 50 employees. Yeah. And I can tell you what, um, sometimes – you know, the first thing that they think is they always want to blame the staff if something goes wrong. Where I tell them, well, what about if you invest into not only training yourself, right? Which is hard to tell sometimes entrepreneurs because, again, they have a mindset that, especially if they've been successful already, I don't need to change. Or exactly. I don't need to change my systems because I've already done this for, you know, 10 years, 20 years, and it's fine. But, you know, times are changing. And, and, and now the millennium generation is very, you know, has a different mentality too. Oh, yeah. And, I, and you're part of that. So, uh, and I'm in between, all right? But anyhow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I'm a hybrid. <laughs> but, oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I tell you what, I do see that with very clear vision that, you know, you need to treat yourself well. Because here's the yeah. thing. If you treat them well, they will treat your customers even better. Yeah, if you treat your people well, they will make you more money. Like, yes. It's not, I'm just like, hello, people. Like, when you treat your people like crap, they're not going to do well. But if you treat them like human beings with love and compassion and empathy, they're going to go above and beyond for the organization. So that is definitely part of the part of the narrative that I'm really pushing and, and saying, look at this. And it's, it's factual too. There's statistics, there's data. I mean, there's so much stuff to back it up. That's amazing. Uh, you know what? I, and, and I think again, just to kind of emphasize in, in this subject is that I, 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 I agree with you. I mean, I think that we need to nurture not only our customers, our staff, because remember those are the ones who are going face to face with your customers or clients, however you yeah. want to call them. And they're on the phone. Okay, they're on the phone, they're through emails, you know, all the communication. So, and I think that when, you know, you're happy in your job, you're going to give more than 100% of yourself uh, because, you know what, you, you know deep inside in, in our emotional feelings, right, that it's not only I'm here and they see me as a number. 
So they don't see me like, okay, I make $25 now, just for an example. So that's yeah. all they see, that for $25 in exchange for my time and my skills and experience, I should be doing this JLB. Instead, they feel like, yes, I'm getting paid for what I know, but at the same time, you know what? I feel great being here, yeah. coming in, because everybody's trying to smile at each other. You know, everybody's trying to get along, be respectful, uh, try to support each other, right? And I agree. I mean, if management is there to kind of like help the rest of the staff, it's going to be a more successful company. Now, yeah. I don't know how many more minutes we have, but I, I, like I said, I have to keep digging in you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> what would be other tips that you can offer, especially for, I will talk about, because I know, like I said, the newer generation, they're more open to yeah. these coaching and understanding that, you know, again, everything is changing as, you know, the era. Yeah. Is changing oh yeah almost everything what would you suggest to someone who's a little bit I uh, would say from a possibly another you know older generation uh, yeah. how to feel how to be able to open up to the possibility that sometimes these changes are needed um, to even improve the bottom line because again if the employees and the staffs are happy what's going to happen you're going to get a better return on your investment exactly yes Yes. Okay. Invest in your people and you'll make more money. So the number one thing, well, first, like with my company, we, we made a clear distinction. We work with leaders who are forward thinking. And what that means is they're open to change. They're open to hearing new perspectives and they're open to new ways of business. So with leaders who are more resistant to that, I always ask the first question is, are you willing to challenge your beliefs and your assumptions? Wow. <laughs> it's a really powerful question and it, yes. it puts, it makes them go very profound. Very yeah. Profound. Yeah. It makes yeah. them go, Oh, whoa. And if they say no, then I am not the person to help them. But if they say yes, then I can work with them. And if it's someone who's resistant to change, I would say that the number one thing is to catapult yourself back to when you were a kid and get that childlike spirit, pull that out of you. Cause right. what happens? Yeah. Like the leaders that are the leaders that aren't vulnerable and they're, and they're not really creating this culture where people love what they do, they have this shell on. So we have to have empathy for those leaders because they clearly put that shell on for a reason. So right. if we can just take that shell down and have them embrace vulnerability and think about the stuff that brings them joy, they might start to eat, you know, lighten up a little bit, right? <laughs> and, and Hopefully. Eat up. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's, it's difficult to go to someone who's much, much older and who's been around for a long time and say, hey, this is a new way of doing stuff. Do you want to try it? Um, because it's hard. I mean, it's like challenging everything that they've ever known to be true. But it's oh. just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's figuring out if they're willing to embrace anything new. And if they're not, then I would, I would recommend to any entrepreneur, that's not the person you want to be working with because it's going to be a headache. But the people that are, that, that answer that question, like, yeah, I'm willing to. Hell yeah, because they, they, want, they want someone to poke and prod at them and break that shell down. And learning is such an important aspect at any time during your lifetime. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, there's no age restriction for that. And, and again, we need to be open, no matter what our age range is, that even a younger person can actually teach you. Because oh, yeah. it's through skills that you're lagging and vice versa. So a lot of times we assume that somehow in our minds that younger people cannot teach other people. But it depends because, like I said, if you've been doing this for a couple of years now and someone who maybe is in the 40s, 50s are jumping into this kind of uh, you know coaching, but you've been doing it longer, obviously now you have the experience even though you're younger. See the yeah, difference? exactly. Yeah. But we have to look at those points, and I think that was really important that I need to bring up because we cannot just judge by a person's by the age to assume that they have the experience. Because again, like I said, just what I just said, it could be yeah. be older, and yet you're lacking experience. Also, we need to define what experience is, right? Because right now, people are tying age to experience. Yes. But I think about so. Okay, so I'm in my early twenties. So if I met someone who was 35 they would be perceived as more experienced, but what if they sat on their butt for a decade of their life and didn't do anything and they just got Good into point. the business world? Who's more experienced? The one who's been busting her butt for the past five, six years, me. 
So I is we got to break down that traditional narrative. Time yeah. means nothing to me. Time things don't take time, they take courage. That's my favorite saying. Things do not take time, they take courage. I'm willing to hire someone who's 5 years younger than me but lives, breathes, eats, sweats everything about what they love because those are the people that are going to go above and beyond. I don't care about the person who has 85 years experience. I don't care. <laughs> are you passionate and will you go above and beyond for this particular thing or, or whatever it is. Great point, great point. You know what, and look what's happening around, if you look around, I mean, right now we have in all these, you know, big retailers, right? They were such a, you know, big brands, right? And they're going out of business and you would think the people that created you know, these brand stores or even businesses, they're no longer around because here is a new technology, a new ideas and how to run a business. And if you're not catching up with it, you're going to be left behind. Yeah. Yes. So, so now the person with, you know, X amount of experience, 30 years, they're actually irrelevant because yeah. they're not, they're not changing. They're not staying up with the changing times. Yeah. So, not adapting. Exactly. Yeah. Adaptability, innovation, just, just being, I think it's just open-mindedness. It's so crucial because life goes so fast and look at the innovation we've had over what, just a hundred years. Just, just do the century. It's insane. Like we went from farming to iPhones. Like that's <laughs> wild to being able to communicate hundreds and thousands of miles away through a screen. Like I can't imagine where we're going to be in the next 50 years. And I can't wait because I want to surround myself with the younger generation so I can learn from them. And, you know, I think that one of my, one of my missions is and why I started doing all this podcasting and, and videos and YouTube and so on is that I really feel that, you know, we need to share knowledge. Because yes. you know what? It, it's selfish if we don't. And Amen. while you're taking your time as an expert to be now here in the video or, or, or you know, recording the, the podcast, people have to realize our time is valuable. But yet we feel that is our mission to be able to share this information with, uh, you know, more of a big audience, right? Yeah. But maybe right now they cannot afford you know, to hire you or even me, but yeah. we're willing to give up this information, at least to give you some tips to help you in the process to tell you that if you have that entrepreneur mentality, go for it. Take I it love on. it. Now don't, you know, don't, please don't jump off the bridge, you know, but I mean, you know, be, 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 be a little bit logical in your thinking, but also follow your heart. Those two oh, things yeah. are very important. So not only logically, but also your, your, what I call, you know, your gut feeling, your hard passion. And you know what I tell people, maybe you want to start when you have a part-time job. Okay. That's what I tell a lot of young entrepreneurs to, to stay with your part-time job or look for a PT and then, yeah. you know, build your business, your side business on the side. That's what I did. I, I was a go. server. I was a server for seven years. Wow. And I started, yeah, I served and it was really flexible with my schedule and I got to take off when I needed to. Um, so yeah, I always say, I say two things. If there's a job making you really, really miserable, I would, I'm not saying quit, but I would really reconsider if this is going to help take you in the direction you want to go. Because most likely if something's making someone so sad inside and upset, they're not going to be able to start what they want to do. Yeah. So that's my first thing. But second, I'm, I'm a big fan of part-time jobs, side hustles, anything Absolutely. that can help you be sustainable as you're starting your business. And then entrepreneurs will know the point when they're like, I'm quitting. Today's the day. It's just, it's like a day and it happens and you never know when it's going to come, but it just clicks. Yeah. And it's exciting for you to fully live in that purpose and, and carry out your dreams. So that's what we tell our young folks out there who are listening yeah. and watching. So the, the definitely thing what we want to do is number one, we definitely want to be able to have some income flow. Okay. You want that yeah. cash flow coming in because you don't want to feel suffocated that, that you right. may not make the car payment or, you know, put some gas yeah. or put on your plate, especially if you're already living, you know, maybe in a roommate situation or you were, you know, maybe you're independent already. You have your own place right and this is really going towards the, the new millennium and in the older generation they go through a lot of changes a lot of them are changing jobs that they were there for many years and you know i know a few of them oh there you go yeah. some of them have been let go because again they were not up with technology so now they feel a replacement for them and, and that must be really difficult but i don't have to kind of wrap up this video and um, in the series, and I tell you what, Alex, how can the audience reach you out that way they know? Because when they're ready, 
they know they're going to yeah. come to you and, and, and you're going to be there to help them out. So please. Yeah. I'm really big on Facebook. So Liz, okay. I'll give you, I'll give you a link to my personal book. I do live. I do Facebook lives there. I'm oh, really great. active with everyone who's in my community. Yeah. So if anyone watching, you want to just talk more about the stuff that I love talking about, uh, join, add me there. I, I love engaging there. So I'll give you my Facebook link. And then you can check out our website. My company's website is called PurposePioneers.com if you want to learn more about purpose-driven business and, and how to start infusing that into your company. Excellent. And these are one-on-one -on -one coaching or you also offer like online courses, by the way, that with you know, the know in general? Yeah. yeah, so we have two things. We have in-person company trainings. So that's for larger companies with teams where we could do uh, particular trainings around purpose-driven business. And then okay. we have a three-month online coaching program. And this could be for the solopreneur, for the person who it's just two business partners, or it could be for someone running a company of 50 people. That is great. Well, once again, really, Alex, I mean, uh, you know, we really appreciate your, your you know, your, your tips and, and everything that you share with us. And yeah. I, I wish you a lot of success and, and I hope we, we, we stay connected and, you know, we're yeah. able to continue even doing some other things out there, you know, uh, the two of us to continue giving value, which is what really what it comes down to. So folks, we're it. almost ready to wrap up and I want to thank everyone once again, Alex. And this is Liz. Let you go into our next exciting episode with another expert guest and stay in touch, like, share, and comment through our social media. And once again, take care, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, Alex.